One day, I was reading some literary argument essays that were written by my AP Lit students. They had to write about Macbeth. While I was reviewing their work, I found out some incredibly interesting plot details. Did you know that King Duncan's ghost showed up at Macbeth's feast in Act 3? Did you also know that Banquo's ghost tagged along and sat at Macbeth's throne? Or how many of you realized that Lady Macduff had a role in Act 5? Wait, you didn't know those things? Interesting, because neither did I. And the reason why is because these things never actually happened in the play. Are you serious? Yet, some of my students wrote about these events with such conviction that they produced excellent essays. Wow. Too bad the literary facts were wrong. Wrong, sir, wrong. Now, you may have never read Macbeth, so you don't have a clue what plot events I'm actually talking about. I don't get it. But this video isn't about that particular Shakespearean play. Even if you aren't familiar with that particular tale, I bet you are familiar with the story that I'm telling about my students. When you have to write a literary analysis about a longer work, and you don't have the book in front of you, you may misremember or completely forget some of the details. This is not something that you want to do, especially on exam day. When something like this happens, it may make you look so stupid. So that you don't look stupid, because you're not, I'm going to provide you with the solution to the misremembering problem. Thank you. Thank you. The only thing I ask that you do for me in return is click the like and subscribe button that you'll see right below the video. The most effective way to make sure that you are prepared for writing any literary argument, but especially the question three for your AP Lit exam, is to create a literature log for three major works that you have read over your high school career. Did you notice that I didn't say that you need to create lit logs for only the works that you've read in AP Lit? Honestly, on the AP Lit exam, you're allowed to write about any book that engages with the topic of the prompt. So if you've read a book that fits and you know a lot about it, you can feel free to write about it. But I will admit, I tell my students that I absolutely will not allow them to write about Twilight or The Hunger Games. <gasps> Fortunately, if you love either of those books, since I'm not your teacher, you don't have to follow my rules. Now, before I list out what you need to fill in in your literature logs, I'm going to offer you a little advice about the types of books that you should consider reviewing to make sure that you can cover any literary argument prompt that can be thrown at you. First, you should review a book that has a character that grows up in some way. Second, you should document a book that in some way has an element of humor involved in it. And third, you should cover a book that you have read in one of your high school classes. This could be from any time between 9th and 12th grade. Recently, in my AP Lit class, my student Jake remarked that we only read nihilistic fiction. I think you ought to know I'm feeling very depressed. And it's probably like that in your class too. So if you've never read a humorous text before and you'd like to do so before exam day, I'm gonna recommend that you read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Alice will actually fulfill the book credentials for my first true criteria. This text is about 100 pages long and about two and a half hours to listen to. I'm going to link the audiobook and the PDF of this book in the description right below the video. Once you pick the books that you want to review, here's all of what you need to include in your lit logs so that you will have easy study materials to remind you of all that you need so you won't forget anything on your test. I've linked up a blank literature log in the description of the video. It's right down there. And I do have some examples filled in about the Book of Mice and Men. I just want to give you the heads up for that because some of the information does include some spoilers. I'd also like to let you know that filling in lit logs is a great partner in group activity if you and your friends have read the same books. There are a few tasks here that would be way easier if they were separate separated and then discussed. But don't be afraid to do this work on your own either. So let's get into the steps. You'll want to start your literary review by recording the title of the first book that you're going to survey. Please make sure that you punctuate the title correctly. Book titles are underlined or italicized, not put in quotes. Quotes are for poems, lyrics, and short stories. Now after you do this, you'll want to record the author of the text. Just the last name will do, but the full name would be better. By the way, here's a pro tip. On exam day, rather than incorrectly attributing authorship of the work that you're writing about, if you can't definitely remember the author's name, please just write the author in those sentences in your essay. Don't guess. There's no reason to be writing about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde while saying that it was written by Mary Shelley. She wrote Frankenstein. Same genre, different story, not the same author. Don't forget it! Fill in the lit logs for the longer works that you've read, and you won't. As you continue your review, you're going to pick out the three most important events in the story and describe each of them as precisely as possible, but in no more than five sentences and in no less than three. You also want to cover these major events in chronological order. When you describe each event, make sure to include how the event influenced the characters and the stories to act. In your descriptions, you really want to focus on how specific the verbs you are using are. The better your verbs, the more analytical you will sound as you write. And these, for this assignment, are just summaries. Imagine how much stronger your analysis will be when you actually add real commentary when you're writing your essays on exam day. It'll rock.
After you've documented the major plot events, you're going to want to reflect on one minor or unseen character that plays a significant role in the story. You didn't see anything. In no less than three, but no more than five sentences, you'll want to describe this character and how he or she impacts other characters, relationships, conflicts, and other plot events. Once you've done this, you'll want to move on to identifying two to four major conflicts and resolutions found in the story. Doing this will remind you about the major plot and character developments that many lit prompts require student writers to analyze. When reflecting, make sure that you don't merely describe the conflicts though. You must include the conflict's resolution because it's in the resolution that you're often able to explore the literary work for its complexity and nuance. It's also in the resolution where readers are able to infer the book's themes. Once the major conflicts and resolutions are out of the way, you'll want to consider two important settings that are in the work. The environments surrounding characters often symbolically relate to the characters themselves, the relationships they have, or these settings create particular moods for the actions that are happening in them. If you can pinpoint and describe meaningful settings, you're really setting yourself up for success. Ugh, that was bad. Just think about it. Remember in the movie Brave when Merida and her mother were fighting and their conflict tore the tapestry that was in the room? Did you ever notice that the tapestry was an element of the setting and its tear symbolized the divide between the mother and the daughter? If you've never noticed, now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Now moving on in your review, you'll want to describe at least one similar motif found in the book. If you already found a symbolic setting for the last task, you could actually just substitute that here. Or, if you want to know more about symbols and motifs, you can check out my videos about these specific literary elements, which are linked in the description below the video. After you've taken care of all of what I've previously mentioned, you're now at the beginning of the end of the lit log process. As you begin to finish your explorations, you will want to identify the ideas that the book you're reviewing explores. I'm talking about singular abstract nouns. In the lit log document that I've provided, I've given you a bunch of idea words. If you struggle with thinking of your own, feel free to check out my list and start your considerations there. Once you have the ideas your book relates to, you'll want to generate universal insights about your book. Or in other words, thematic statements. Now, explaining how to write thematic statements, though not very hard, would make this video way too long. So if you want more help than the template and examples that I've provided for you in my lit log document provide, you'll want to watch my theme video. Of course, it's linked in the description, and it's actually linked right up here. Also down in the description is a link to Revise. This is a study app that's like an academic version of TikTok without all the distractions. It can help you with SATs, AP exams, and other standardized tests, and it tracks your progress as you complete courses in the interface. It also provides you with a learning community for support. You should really check it out. Now, the tenth and final step for your lit log is to find a quick quote that in some way relates to the book that you're exploring. You may think this step seems a little nonsensical and meaningless, but it's not. Imagine that you were producing your conclusion for your essay and you wanted to end with a pertinent piece of wisdom. And then you think of it, the best insight ever from a publicly respected figure or work. And then when you've thought of it, you drop it right at the end of your conclusion and you look incredible. That's a spicy meatball. Especially because you were sure to credit the quote to the original speaker or author because you remembered who said it since you reviewed your lit logs the morning of your exam. Honestly, I'm giving you steps that will help make you look like the quintessential scholar. And if you generate these literature logs throughout your school year, you'll have plenty of information to pull from come test time, no matter what prompt you'll see. Now that you have plenty of stories and information to write about, it's time to start actually learning how to do so. You can do that by joining me and looking at how to compose literary arguments by watching what's about to pop up right on your screen.